In this video, we'll learn about isomers and isomerism. Before we start learning about anything else, we should define what an isomer is. Isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula, but a different arrangement of those atoms. So they have the same formula, same number of atoms, but just a different arrangement. Could either be a different spatial arrangement or a different structural arrangement. So atoms bonded differently. And so when we look at our single bonds and our single bond isomers, those tend to be focusing on bond rotation. So when we have a bond rotation, we know that our atoms can spin and rotate around their bonds, usually without much impunity. So when we have a single bond, any structural difference is only in the rotation around that single bond. And those are what we call conformers or different conformations. So an example, let's say we have ethane. In ethane, if I were to draw a 3D structure for ethane, we have hydrogens coming out, hydrogen going back, another hydrogen coming out, another hydrogen going back. So I can draw a structure like this, or if we want, I can rotate around that single bond there. And when I rotate around that single bond, can end up with a slightly different structure. And if we look at a slightly different structure, the only difference is, the only difference is this hydrogen, instead of pointing down, it could be pointing up. Or maybe I didn't rotate that much and I only rotate a little bit. So this hydrogen coming forward is now pointing straight up. And then these all just kind of rotate around a little bit. The best way to think about this or visualize it, if you don't have a model kit, take your thumb and your first two fingers and then hold them out. If you hold them out and you start rotating, that would be the three hydrogens on that carbon rotating around. And any time you stop your hand rotating, that's a new conformer. That's a new conformation. And so with the ethane, we can have an infinite amount of conformations here. So there's an infinite number of ethane conformations since we have free rotation around that single bond. So because we have free rotation, nothing is stopping that from rotating. Any moment you stop it, you can have a new conformer. And we tend to see this a lot with single bonds. With double bonds, however, we don't get that free rotation because in a double bond, it contains a, sing it contains a sigma bond and a pi bond. So if we're to draw out ethylene, for example, We draw ethylene, I want to be able to break those bonds. This double bond locks its two carbons in place. And so now if we were to change two of the hydrogens for something different. So let's say we put a chlorine on each one. Having the two chlorines there means one chlorine is gonna be on the opposite side of the double bond versus the other chlorine. And there's no way I can rotate it like with the, um, like with the ethane. With the ethane, I was able to rotate freely. Since it's a double bond here, it's locked into place. I can't do a rotation. So that means
between my two different isomers here. So if I were to draw the two chlorines on the same side, I can actually distinguish these two isomers from each other because they don't switch back and forth. So the one where the chlorines are on opposite sides, that's what we call trans because they're transverse to each other. And the one that's on the same side, that's what we call cis. And you can actually isolate each isomer. They have different enough chemical properties and physical properties, we can actually isolate them. And so the reason that it gets stuck into place If we try and draw our bond here, let's say here's our pi bond. There's my hydrogen coming out. Actually, I'll try and, there's my chlorine in the back. I'll draw the cis here. There's my other chlorine in the back. There's my hydrogen coming out. Now here, the red line in the middle, that's our sigma bond. That's our single bond that connects it. The pi bond is the two p orbitals that are overlapping on the top and bottom. If I try and rotate it, that pi bond, that overlap will break. And so if we try to rotate, we can end up with, keep that one the same. So let's say we wanted to switch between the cis and the trans. This carbon here, instead of having the pi bond going up and down, now it's going back and forth. And then let's say we did a, try to do a rotation like that. So our hydrogen is now pointing up and our chlorine is pointing down. But you can see we no longer have the overlap between the p orbitals here, or one's pointing up and down and one's pointing side to side. So we no longer have that overlap. We no longer have that pi bond. And it takes energy to break this. Since we have no overlap, it takes a lot of energy to break those bonds. And unless we add enough energy into it, we can't switch between cis and trans. So just sitting at room temperature, cis and trans don't separate from each other. Or cis and trans can be separated from each other. And we'll see more about these later on in the class. So our next group of isomers and probably the larger group is what we call constitutional isomers. These are the ones that have the same formula but a different connection of atoms. So when we're looking at our bond rotation, they had the same connection of atoms. If you think about it, or if we go back to it, eat this carbon is bonded to a chlorine and a hydrogen and double bonded to another carbon. This carbon bonded to a chlorine, hydrogen, and double bonded to another carbon. Same with this one, it's bonded to a chlorine, hydrogen, double bonded to another. Chlorine, hydrogen, double bond. So they have the same configuration of atoms. They have the same bond types. Just happens we switch two of the atoms on that chlorine. But now constitutional isomers have different connections. It's not gonna be the exact same. And so if we want to try a couple of examples so we can see it out. So let's try butane. Butane is C4H10. So what I want you guys to do, try to draw as many structures of C4H10 as you possibly can. Pause the video, take some time to try and draw them, and then unpause. See if you get the same ones as me. Okay, 
Now let's see if we get the same ones. First, straight chain. So it's straight chain. I can see I have one, two, three, four points there. So I have four carbons. The carbons on the end need to have four bonds total. So there's one, two, three hydrogens. One, two, three. So that's three and three makes six. Each of the points, two hydrogens each. So that makes 10. And hopefully you guys are getting much better at line structures because that's all you'll be seeing from here on out. But to draw your hydrogens one last time. There you can see C4, H10. Some of you might have drawn something like that instead. So each carbon on the end has three hydrogens. Three, six, nine. The middle one has our 10th hydrogen. And one, two, three, four. These are our two possible isomers for butane. Not too bad, right? We can do this. Let's try another example. Let's try pentane. So we just add one carbon. So it's C5, H12. Again, try to draw as many isomers as you can. Pause the video. Okay, let's see how many you drew. Hopefully, everyone got the first one, our straight line drawing, straight chain as we call it. Maybe you copied that second one we drew and just added that extra one in the middle. That works. Or maybe you came up with a new type of structure. So we can see with the more carbon and hydrogens we add to it, the more structures we can get, the more different connections we can come up with for the atoms. And so now when we look into this a little further, we can also have a different position of a double bond or a ring or some other feature. So let's try this out. So in our example, we have C5H10. It took out two hydrogens. So taking out two hydrogens is what we call taking out a degree of unsaturation, or now we're deficient hydrogens. So we have what we call one hydrogen deficiency at the moment. And you'll watch the video about calculating and figuring out hydrogen deficiencies after this one. So when we have one deficiency, I gave you all a hint before you try it. One deficiency equals one double bond or one ring. So one pi bond or one ring. So one hydrogen deficiency equals one pi bond or one ring. So that means all of our structures we draw for this isomer have to have a pi bond or ring in it. Again, try to draw as many as you can. Pause the video. See you after the pause. So how do we do on this? How many did you draw? You're able to get seven of them. Woohoo, you got it right. If you didn't, that's okay. This class is all about learning how to think critically and think outside the box. So our first structure, I can draw a double bond on the end of my chain, no big deal. So I can just take that double bond and move it to the next carbon-carbon single bond, kind of just move it down the chain one. Again, I can repeat that. So not so bad, we've got two structures now. You can also think about cis-trans isomers, remember? Don't forget those. So here, my two groups are on the same side. My two hydrogens are on the same side. I have cis. 
Can't I draw the trans? That gives me another constitutional isomer or another isomer. Now you're probably thinking, well, what if we move the double bond down the chain one more? So if we do that, I get a structure that looks like that. Because here we have it on the end between carbons, call it one, two, three, four, five. Here it's one between carbon two and three. Well, if I just start counting on the other end, isn't it still between carbons two and three? So all we did was basically take that structure and flip it over. It's just like if you take your hand, you're looking at your palm, flip it over, now you're looking at the top of your hand. Doesn't count. So we've exhausted all of our chances for double bonds here. Now let's start looking at that ring. So if I take C5H10 and I draw it as a ring, I end up with a pentane ring, cyclopentane. I can make that ring smaller. I have a four-membered ring instead. Can also make it smaller again. Three-membered rings count. Cyclopropanes. And then just put a chain on it. Or instead of making a full chain, take my cyclopropane and draw two methyl groups. So now you can see we ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like I proposed. Seven possible structures. So when we're looking at our constitutional isomers, it's really important to first figure out if you have any deficiencies and then play around with the structures. You can see here at the cis one, we attempted to draw a third cis isomer, but it just ended up being kind of looking in a mirror. So that didn't quite count. And figuring them out is a little bit of trial and error, kind of playing with the structure. So don't worry if you're having a hard time with it. The larger and bigger the molecules, the more possible constitutional isomers you can get. And then finally, a quick little brief look at stereoisomers. So stereoisomers differ in how their atoms are oriented in space. We've already seen this with our cis and trans. So something that's cis, versus trans. The only difference is this methyl group is pointing up, now it's pointing down. But everything else is still the same. So cis-trans isomers or geometric isomers, they have to have two groups on each end of the double bond. And reversing their position does not give a different compound. So you have to have two different groups on each carbon. If you have the same group on each carbon, let's say we have our methyl like that, there's no cis-trans isomers. Since it's the same group, there's no cis-trans isomer. Because even if we switch the methyl groups, it's still a methyl group and methyl group. It has to be two different groups on the carbons here, and then two different groups on this carbon. You can have the same group on each carbon like this, where they both have a methyl and a hydrogen. That's OK. But if I had two methyls here and then two hydrogens on this side, that doesn't count. And then one other type of stereoisomer that we're going to get to later and in a lot more detail is what we call stereochemistry. And that's when we look at a carbon in three-dimensional space that has four different groups attached to it. And so having the four different groups attached to it and kind of changing the location of those groups
that actually creates a different compound. So this one here is where we get into what we call stereochemistry. And we'll see that a little bit later in the term, but right now, kind of just keep it in the back of your mind. If there's four different groups attached to a carbon atom, it involves stereochemistry. It's still a stereoisomer, but it gets into a more specific type of stereoisomer. We're currently focused on our cis-trans and then our constitutional isomers. So now you guys should be more familiar with isomers and isomerism in organic chemistry. Should also be able to start drawing different isomers if I give you a formula. 